Fancy dining. That being said, it'd be wonderful if I can welcome in our first guest, Chef Walter from Trio. Look at this wine. I'm feeling better already. Here, Ma, I'll let you kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing that bottle anymore, am I? Chef, this looks amazing. Thank you. Look at this. Slide this back a little, put our glasses over here. Look at this. All right, so the aroma is already driving me crazy. So we're going to have to talk about these dishes before we get into anybody else. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me today, Thank Chef. you for having me. Great to have you here. So let's tell me what you brought. Before we get into everything else, tell me what these dishes are. So these are Karen Elizabeth scallops straight from the boat in uh, Galilee. We get it right from the fishermen. Um, we have local corn puree in the bottom, uh, saute of fingerlings, corn, asparagus, great tomatoes, and a chive oil on them. Just local um, fresh ingredients right now. God, all of my favorite things. This dish is going to be like, talk about the slimming <laughs> effect of my shirt earlier. I'm in trouble already. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what else we got? So we have a pan roasted cod. This is my take on the classic uh, white wine butter, you know, breadcrumb cod that you, that you see in New England a lot. So um, on the bottom we have a lemon risotto with um, arugula and grape tomatoes and a cod, uh, crab ver blanc sauce on top. Crab ver blanc. Yep. Nice. And some breadcrumbs. For so is that a little bit of crab that's in the sauce right that I'm seeing? Yep. Exactly. Oh my God. So you got the crab, you got the seafood, the fish there. This yep. is like both of these. Now, oh wait, let's talk about the wine because I'm, I'm challenging from yesterday and <laughs> I'm in trouble. So what would you bring me for well, a bottle French of wine? French Chardonnay. No way, go, no way to go wrong with a French Chardonnay. No. So we're going to have to have a little bit of this to get started. So, Chef, one of the questions I have before we get into everything else is talk about Trio, the style of the menu. I'll give you that. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Feeling better already. <laughs> mm. So our style is American um, with coastal um, influences on our food. So we have, you know, fish and chips. We have the lobster roll. We have the calamari. Um, but we also have fresh homemade pastas, fresh pizzas uh, that we make, uh, make our own bread in-house. We make our own pickles. Um, our burgers come from Sunset Farm, which is five minutes on the road. Right, absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Greenview Farm is where we get a lot of our produce from, which is in Wakefield. Um, Again, so right around the corner from you. Right around the corner, yeah. yep. yep. Um, so we're trying to just really do fresh local food, um, simply prepared, that everybody can enjoy. And I think there's something on the menu for everybody. You know, we do a Buffoni Farm chicken, which is USDA certified uh, free range chicken. Um, half roasted chicken. So th I think there's something for everybody on the menu. It's an extensive menu. I mean, the, there's certainly an extensive menu. Like you said, the selections there are wide ranging. I was a trio just a couple weeks ago <coughs> for dinner that I was down there. Because dinner, it's, it's dinner, it's not lunch service, right? Yeah, okay. we're we'll open for lunch uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday for yeah. lunch. Okay, so I was down there on a Wednesday night after this. Mm -hmm. had an event down that way at a friend's house and ended up there for drinks and late night appetizers. And one of the things that was awesome that I sat at and we could talk about was the bar. Yeah. You've got a new bar. Yes. All right, let's talk about this new bar. We're going to come back to menu stuff, but i got to say, I sat at the bar, which is not uncommon for me, so <laughs> let's, let's talk about this new bar. Well, it's a, a huge uh, horseshoe bar that we just redid. It's in the middle of the, the room. You can't miss it as soon as you walk in. It's 28 seats. Um, it's gorgeous. You know, everything is brand new in there, and uh, it's really taken off. So picture a horseshoe bar, because if you're a people watcher like I am, especially when you're going in later in the evening, this horseshoe bar is perfect for people watching. Yeah. I mean, it's very, you're central to where you are. Like you said, 28 seats, that's a, a very large bar by any standards. Yeah. But to be in the center of where it is and to be at this horseshoe effect, you're seeing, I mean, depending on where you're sitting, you've got a great view of pretty much everything going on. So if you're a people watcher, it's a fantastic bar to hang out at. And I was, like I said, I was doing appetizers, and I think we had a late night cocktail, but the people around me, there was people having full dinners just sitting oh, at the bar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Enjoying it. Yep. So heading back to the menu, and you just touched upon how you have a, a really decent variety for people to select from. Seafood is what you're excelling in down there in your location, right? Yes. Where exactly in Narragansett, for the people watching, where is Trio located? Trio is a block away from the beach. Um, if you know where the Coast Guard House and the towers are, yep. we're a block uh, south from there. So a block south, right along the beach. Right along the beach. You can see the water from our patio, our outside patio. Uh, you can see the view there. Um, where is it? There's a um, parking lot, free parking for everybody. Nice. <laughs> so you got to get people coming back and forth from the beach going into it. Exactly, yeah. And that's why we don't open for lunch during the week. You know, people going to the beach, um, it just doesn't work out. So Right. So let's go back to the menu. And you mentioned two farms that you sourced from already. Mm -hmm. 
I got to imagine, looking at a dish like this, that this is locally sourced as well. Yes. Okay. So where as much as possible. As much as possible. So let's talk about that in general. What are some of the other items that you're able to look based on your location? I'm assuming that it becomes pretty common, right? Yeah. This time of year is is wonderful in Rhode Island. You know, you got tomatoes right around the corner. Um, you know, fresh greens, fresh arugula. Um, we also use Farm Fresh for a lot of our products, which nice. sources um, mm -hmm. from different farms and delivers to us. Um, so Narragansett Creamery is somebody else that I use. Um, we use their fresh mozzarella, we use their feta, um, and it's just local uh, greens and as much product as we can. Locally. And is it a lot of relationships with the fishermen that are coming in to, <coughs> to source some of the stuff that, at the docks? I mean, because you're in your Galilee, so. Yeah, yep. So our, our cod, we use full leaf fish for, for that, and that's, um, they get a lot of their products from Georgia's Bank. Okay. That's where the cod is from. Yep. You know, same thing with the salmon. So we're using um, as, most, as, as much local as we can. So very often you can't get any fresher than this. Being the location that's at, I'm sure we're going to hear this with the other couple of guests that are joining us today. Yeah. So from Trio's perspective and your creative aspect, is this something that the menu is changing seasonally for you down there? Yep, very seasonal. Um, we'll do two big changes for the summer and the winter, and we'll tweak them on menu items you know, during the rest of the year as stuff becomes um, you know, fresh and local. So supporting from a chef's perspective, and you know, almost chefs like to work with local fresh ingredients, so from that perspective of being able to do that locally sourced, it's got to help you in your menu preparations, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, you, 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 when something is fine ripened and fresh right around the corner, you don't have to do much to it. You know, a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and you let that product speak for itself. Right. Now, <coughs> from the program sense, and we talked about the new bar that you have, is that I noticed one of the things that was in there is that you have a pretty extensive wine list. You have beautiful wines on the list. You have some creative bartenders that were making some of the cocktails that were behind the bar there. How important is your beverage program to the food side of the house? Oh, very important. You know, we have a lot of white wines, which goes great with the fishes. You know, we have some red wines. Um, we do have a filet on the menu. You know, we have a steak free on the menu, which is another popular dish. Nice. Um, we have specialty cocktails. There's a um, uh, watermelon radish martini that we do. Watermelon radish martini. Yeah, that sounds like something I would try. Yeah. Molly would try that too, I think. <laughs> so. With that going, do you, have you noticed a trend where people are now pairing up more, whether it's a cocktail or a wine? Have you noticed that people are expanding on the palates a little bit more and doing that? Absolutely, and you know the the beers, um, you know, we're trying to get local beers in there as well. Um, so you see a lot of people really concerned about where their product is coming from. Is it local? Is it you know, you know, right around the corner basically? And I would think, I mean, from my experiences in going down there, and you can verify this for me. I want to ask each of you guys this today: is that there's a heavy tourism base, especially this time of year. Yes. That's coming in. I mean, it's I, I wouldn't know the percentage, but I have to imagine that it's up there mm -hmm. from the amount of tourists that are coming in. It would seem, you know, and I find this in Providence, and I'm wondering if it's the same down there, is that the tourists coming in appreciate that local base. When they know that something's fresh, and a lot of times, I mean, I know that there's tourists coming in that can't get this type of seafood on a regular basis. Yeah. Do you guys experience that with the volume of people that are coming in? Yeah, we got a lot of um, people that have summer homes down here, so from New York and Connecticut that come down. But they're return customers too, right? Um, and you know what we offer is you know scratch kitchen. You know right from the time you sit down, you know the bread is made fresh. You know hours before you got there, um, and you know daily specials. You know usually an app special and an entree special every day. Beautiful. So that's added to the menu that you're already offering each day. Yes. So a couple of the things that I want to just before I let you go is that I always get this question about it. It's a kind of a twofold question is. From the chef's perspective, and coming in, you have you have all the creativity, and you come from a great group. So you're from Newport Harbor group. So that's you know we should address that before that's last questions. You have a great experience with this group. You've been with the group for how long now? Six years. So for six years. So your experiences over the last six years, you've kind of gotten the experience into the different restaurants. Which yep. ones were you with? I was the executive chef at the Mooring in Newport. I also ran the Smokehouse for a summer, which is the barbecue uh, restaurant in front of the Mooring. Right in America's Cup, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you had the smokehouse, you had the mooring. Yep, I've been to the boathouse. Um, I worked at all the restaurants except for the Castle. So I think we're going to run through the gamut of having the, the Newport Harbor groups, the Newport restaurant groups, people on because they've got all these wonderful restaurants. We had Chef Max in a couple of weeks ago from Henry. Yes. talking about seafood. Max did a great job. But that has given you, and I would have to say from my perspective and talking about your menu creations, that's given you a wide perspective 
I mean, you've been at, at the different variations. I mean, the mooring offers seafood, yeah. and the boathouse does, but the smokehouse is it's not the priority over there, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you've got this great perspective from it. And where did you go to school for your culinary training? Johnson and Wales. Awesome. <laughs> Another alum, Johnson and Wales, see? <laughs> All right, excellent. So that kind of leads me into a couple of these last things that we like to talk about is that it's twofold. One is your style of cooking. What are some of your favorite things to prepare? That's one part of the question. And the second is, what is a dish or two that you would recommend the guests don't miss, something that they should try in the restaurant? So it's a, it's a two-part question. Well, definitely these two dishes. These are two of the most popular dishes right now because it's local, fresh ingredients. Um, these are probably the top sellers. Also the steak frites, which is a big seller. We hand cut our french fries and blanch them every day. Nice. <clears throat> and you mentioned you make the pickles too, right? Yeah, we make our own pickles in house for the burgers. Um, Sunset Farm Burger, like I said, you know, it's just as much as we can, local, locally sourced, you know, Korean food. All right, so that answers what they should miss. Now, what are some of your favorite things to prepare? Do you, like to <laughs> um, you know, at the end of the day, I like making pizza. Really? Yeah. So let's talk about the pizzas that they offer, because that's something that you wouldn't think about coming down there in Agansa, that you'd be able to get these. And, and then, are they wood, wood oven, or what is that? No, it's just a, a regular gas oven, okay. but, um, you know, we make the dough in-house, we hand structure them to order. Um, we have, you know, the basic margarita. Uh, we have a pot of bing. We have a fig pizza, which is really popular. What's a pot of bing? What's pot of bing? A pot of bing. Yeah, what's the pot of bing? I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> so the what's on the pot of bing? <laughs> The bottom thing is uh, pepperoni, sausage, hot peppers, and red onion. So everything you think about a bottom thing. There yeah. you go. All right, so you had the bottom thing, and I interrupted you. What was the next one? Uh, the fig and prosciutto, which is probably the most popular one. It's a white pizza, goat cheese, um, sliced thin prosciutto, arugula, and truffle oil. And that's probably one of the biggest sellers out of the pieces. Yeah, my God, that sounds absolutely amazing. So throughout the year, and this is one of the things I want to emphasize, is that Narragansett isn't a year-round dining destination. You guys don't have a period of time where you close for several months or anything. No, right? we're open year-round. So it's a restaurant that's open year-round, sitting on the beach. And, you know, I'm going to ask all the guests this, but I have to imagine that going there in the winter, it's probably easier to get in at certain times, and you probably have just as spectacular of a view. Yeah, right? absolutely. Does Trio have the ability to do private events to other private parties? Yes. Yep. We have a, a space in the back that can handle around 80 people. Really? Uh, there's a, a bar that we can make a private bar if necessarily. Um, but we do events pretty much every week. I don't think I realized that you had that space for 80 back there. So someone can come in, and this is a, another <laughs> important thing to know, especially if you want to be in there against down that season. So someone can come in and work with your group. Is it customized menus that you're doing for the private events? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, usually based off our menu. So you know, you, you take a look at it. You, you want um, you know a couple uh, entrees, a couple appetizers from that menu. You know, that's not a problem. And I know that you mentioned that from a, the tourism perspective, is you've got guests that have become regulars that have houses down there, which is not uncommon. I wish I had one. But mm -hmm. you've also got this proximity to URI. Yes. So from that perspective, you must be getting parents that are coming in and their first time to visiting Rhode Island. Yes. Okay, graduation special. Graduation is very busy over there. Yeah. So you've got literally your season catapults in May? Yep. Now, how long does it extend from a tourism base? Is it usually through? Through September, I would say mid-September, mid to late September. Okay. It's when people start calling back. And, and one of the questions I had, which I'm glad you answered about the, the booking the private parties, and I, I, I glad I forget it is what I'm trying to say, is I didn't realize that there was 80 people to do that. That private room, is that open year round as well, so people can do holiday so, parties and stuff down there? Um, so they close off half of it. There are, it's Half of it's outside, half of it's inside. Outside. So what, what you can do with about 40 people, you know, year around Season. in that room. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can also rent out the entire restaurant. You know, because we're not open for lunch, we do a lot of um, venues and, and parties during the day, which is possible as well. Excellent. Is there anything that I forgot, Chef, that are news I knew about? The bar was the biggest news for me to make sure I share because that bar was unique. Yeah. Any other exciting things coming up or things that we should know about? Uh, menu changes soon. Um, you know, when tomatoes are going to hit the next couple of weeks, you know, we're going to do some specials with that and you know, change the menu a little bit. Fantastic. Okay. Chef, thank you for joining me today. Really appreciate you having me. Thank you for having me. You've got to check out Trio. It's part of a great group. We're going to have other, other restaurants on soon. Kate is going to help me with that, as well as Lisa, because they're awesome people. I'm kind of holding them to the fire by saying that publicly. So they're going to help me make sure. I know that I've got to hold off on some of the Newport restaurants until it's less busy down there. I get that. <laughs> so I've got it. But thank you again, Chef, for joining me. Really appreciate it.